So, what can we do to make MIDI strings sound real? I wanna say, regardless of your budget, you will find some awesome sounding MIDI strings out there. However, they are not perfect. But there are things you can do as well to make them feel even more realistic. And what are those things you ask? Well, I have put together 7 steps for you in order to get a realistic sounding MIDI orchestra. Check it out. Number 1. Separate each string instrument into different tracks. Okay, let's say you have recorded all of your strings like this in one track. Before you proceed to any of the next steps, you have to separate the string instruments. I do this by duplicating the original, and then go through each string instrument. I know that violins are the highest notes, and therefore I only keep the highest notes. The violas and cello are in the middle, so I'll keep the middle note, while the basses are in the lowest. I see, but what happens if you don't separate the instruments? If you don't separate them, you will lose valuable control of each of the string instruments in the ensemble. And if you are looking to get a realistic sounding orchestra, not separating the instruments could give you issues and headaches later on. A real orchestra consists of a lot of different individuals, and they won't play everything exactly the same way. For example, the cellist could play the melody a little softer than a viola player would. Or maybe the violins are dragging a little behind? Rushing. These are the things that humanize the orchestra, and which you definitely should play around with yourself. By separating the instruments, you will later on have the option to, for example, make the violin come in a bit later than the cello, and make every part of the orchestra feel like there are actual human beings playing the instruments. And that way, you will have more control over your project, and you are ready to follow through with the next step. Step 2. Emulate the positioning of a real orchestra by panning. If you have been sitting in a concert hall or just been listening to an orchestra piece in your headphones, you have probably noticed this. The sound of high strings like violins is often notably more present in your left ear, while the lower sounding cello and basses are more present in your right ear. You see, most orchestras do tend to follow the same positioning layout. On stage, the violins are on the left side, and the violas are yeah, almost in the center, and the celli and basses are on the right side. In other words, we as an audience are used to both seeing and hearing it this way. And that is why panning your instruments according to the orchestra layout may give us a sense of perceived realism. And in your door, you pan your instruments like this. The violins are on the left side of the stage. The violas slightly to the right or in the center. The celli are on the right side. And the double basses are behind the celli on the right side. Okay, we have separated the instruments. We have positioned them accordingly. And now is the time to make them sound like they're being played by a real human being. How do we do that? Step number three. Use MIDI controller faders for expression. What is expression? Expression is different techniques used to bring the musical arrangement to life. For example, vibrato is a common way for both string instruments and vocals to add expression to the music. We can do this with MIDI control faders. If you have faders on your MIDI keyboard, great! If you don't, I recommend you check out the ones I am using, called Palette Gear. I'll link to them down in the description. You assign different MIDI expressions by right-clicking on either knobs or faders within the VST interface. Then you should see some sort of learn message. Click on it, move the fader you want to be assigned and you should see this. Okay, we have already separated the instruments, so it's much easier doing something with them. Let's try to use expression on the viola. Just listen to this example without and with the applied steps.
Not perfect, but it sounds much better. It breathes like the piece is performed by actual people. And this doesn't take that long to accomplish. If you want, you could now play around with the EQ and other effects to make it sound even better. For more in-depth information on MIDI controllers, I highly recommend you visit the awesome channel of Christian Hansen. I, I want to say, using the key switches and the MIDI controllers, well, it will make the instrument performance, if you will, sound more random and more organic, just like a real player would play it. Step number four. Add reverb and sense of space! Some libraries out there may benefit big time by adding some reverb on it. Using reverb could be a great way to add depth in your musical piece. For example, some instruments like the woodwinds are typically positioned further back in the orchestra. Try to add a little extra reverb to the woodwinds to see if it helps emulating this. Some libraries have more options in terms of reverb. Room type, Mics used and microphone distance all play their part in how realistic your instrument sounds. If your library doesn't have many options, you could try a reverb called Convolution Reverb. This reverb assigns a room type, for example Cathedral. This Cathedral is an actual recorded sample. And this reverb aims to put the instrument in this very space. Try removing any existing reverb and add the Convolution Reverb instead to your master track to see if it could trick us to believe that every instrument is located in the same room. Oh, by the way, I share my favorite reverb effect in another post I wrote on my music website. So be sure to check it out if you want to know which one I'm talking about. You'll find a link in the description. Alright, so let's recap so far. We have separated the instruments, we have positioned them according to the orchestra layout, we have put some expression on them, and we have applied some reverb. What's next? Step number five, blend in an actual real instrument. Okay, that is actually a quite clever hack, because if you put in a real instrument, you may actually fool the human ear to believe the rest of the thing is real too. Step number six, have the right mindset. Pretend you're actually recording a real live orchestra. By pretending you're actually working with a real orchestra, you may suddenly become aware of things that are impossible to play for a flutist. For example, a brass player cannot hold a note just as long as the cellist can. Because, well, he needs to breathe, you know? <coughs> a handy tip, Try to breathe along with the note when you play a, a brass or woodwind VST. Professional brass players may have stronger lungs and more practice than you, but I would rather have a note that is a bit too short than way too long. I should really learn to play this though. Step number seven, mix libraries. Feel free to mix and match different libraries. It may be harder for a trained ear to hear what exactly what kind of library you're using. If you have just started out with music production, you don't need to splash the cash already. You'll find a lot of great and free MIDI strings out there. Like Labs or BBC Discover by Spitfire, or a bunch of free stuff from Native Instruments. Myself, I combine viola and violins from Albion Spitfire, cello from Best Service, drums from Native Instruments, and flutes from East West in my orchestral templates. So, in this video, we have been through seven steps in order to get a realistic sounding MIDI orchestra. Thank you so much for watching this video. If there were any tip that stood out to you, please comment below. I will be releasing new videos every Monday. So, please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time.